In this episode, we will take a look at how we can store data that belongs together. In Python, we typically do this using lists, but in Java, we actually have two different ways of doing this. We have what is called array lists that work very similar to our Python list. But then we also have arrays which work a little bit different. And to make a long story short, we can say that the biggest difference between the two is that arrays have a fixed size and array lists have a dynamic size. Let us jump straight into some code and have a look. There are many ways of using array lists in Java, but for this introduction, I will try to keep it simple and short. And we can see the corresponding uh, Python code here, but give me a second and I will write how it looks in Java. So here we have the code that corresponds to this uh, Python code where we create, in Java's case, an array list. And we store Anna and Kalle uh, in that array list. But let us have a look at what is actually going on here because it might look a little bit weird. So if we take a look at this part first, we want a variable called names and the type of that variable will be array list string. Do you remember a few episodes ago, I talked about that in Java, we have two different uh, data types. Uh, we have primitive data types and we have reference data types. What we see here is a reference data type. You will talk a lot more about them now that you will start learning about object-oriented programming. But we can see here that the type is array list, and this time that we are using the array list, we will store strings in it. So we must specify that it is an array list and what type that we're gonna store in it. And that's this side. But all right, what is happening here? Well, in Java, when we are using reference types, we must create an object. We must create our array list so that we later can use it. So uh, what we're doing here is that we are creating an array list that can store strings and we are calling the variable names. And then after that, we are adding Anna and Kalle to that array list. And if we compare it to our Python code just above it, we can see that we have this uh, same three steps where we create our list and then when we add Anna and Kalle to the list. The Java version is a little bit more verbose. We have to write a little bit more to specify what we want so that Java knows that. But other than that, it is the same three steps. And let us continue and see how we can print these values that we now have in our array list. Here we have the code for printing all the elements or all our names to the screen. And we have looked at for loops before, so we can see that, all right, we create a variable called int that will be valid in this loop. It starts at zero. And what is the condition? We will continue as long as i is less than the size of our array list. So we can ask our array list how many elements it has by calling a method called size. It will return how many we have in it. In this case, we have two names in it. So it returns the size two. Uh, and each time we increase i by one. And in the loop, what we're doing is that we are asking the list for its element at a specific index. So if we compare to how it looks in Python, it is again more verbose. We have to say that, all right, I call this method and ask you 
for the element at index i. But what this does is the same as we do in Python this way. So we, we fetch the, the element at an index and then, then we print it. So if we run it, we can see what we have managed to do is to create an array list, store two elements, Anna and Kalle, in it, and then we have created a loop where we um, print them all. And we can add one more name here. So if I add, for example, max, and then we run it again, we can see that it prints all three of the values. And now let's continue to the other way of storing data that belongs together, the array. Let me first write the code uh, and then we will talk about it. And if we stop here for a second, I first made a mistake. I said that my array would contain integers, but I figured it out and said it all right. It is names that we are storing, so it must be strings. And what we see here, uh, string, and then we have the square brackets. This indicates that what we want is not just one string, but we want an array of strings. And then we give it a name, and we can see it's very similar to what we did before when we created an array list. But what we're doing here is that instead we are creating an array and it has to, it has the possibility or it has the ability to store two elements in it. So we specify how many elements we can store in it. And then we store Anna and Kalle at index zero and one, which looks uh, familiar um, because we have used this notation in Python when we ask for elements. Let me add a loop where we print the names from the array. And we can see if we are using an array, uh, we cannot use names.size. Instead, it's our variable more names.length. So this is something that we have to remember. If we're using an array list, we can ask the array list for how many elements it has by calling the method size. But if it is an array, we're using length instead. So if we run it, now we have the same names, but we can see that, all right, these last two, they are the ones stored in the array. And when we fetch them from uh, our array, we do it the same way as we would do in Python. So we have the square brackets and then the index uh, where we want to uh, fetch them from. All right. Um, so we have these two ways of, of storing data that belongs together, array lists and arrays, but there is um, two more things I want to show here in this video. And we have something in Python that is quite handy. If we are just interested in what we have in our array or array list, we don't necessarily need to know about the index. What we can do then is uh, what we can see on the screen here. Um, and we can do something similar using an enhanced for loop in Java. It would look like this. And now if we run it, we will see that uh, it's a bit hard because we are using the same names and printing them over and over again. Uh, but we can see the last three ones here are the ones printed with our enhanced for loop. So what is going on here? Well, what we're saying here is that, all right, 
look at names, our array list, and we are going to loop through it. Each time we are going to take out a string and we are going to call it name. So each time we are in this loop, name will have a different value. I think what I will do is I will call it more names instead. So we are taking it from the array list instead. Yes, because then we can see it here on the screen at the same time. So the first time, the first iteration in the loop, name will get the value Anna. And then the next iteration, name will get the value Kalle. So name updates for each iteration. And as we said here, it's going to be strings. So we must specify what type this variable name is going to be. There is one more thing uh, I want to show you. And it works with both the array list and the array, but I'll, I will change it here for the array list. A few episodes ago, we said that in Java, we must be explicit and tell Java what type of variable is going to be. We can actually uh, ask Java to help us with that. We can use something called local variable type inference, where Java tries to figure out what type it is. So if we specify the type to be var, so that's a keyword, then on the right hand side, I specify that I want an array list of strings. Then Java can see what we have on the right hand side, and it knows that names should be of the type array list that stores strings.